Ah, Jesus. Top of the morning to you folks. Nothing says good morning. I don't know where that went. More at 9 a.m. than making some meatballs, but not just any meatballs. Oh no, look at this tweet. Look at this tweet right here. Oh, Ikea, the internationally renowned Swedish uh, furniture store, which we do actually shop in quite a bit. This table, this table right there is from Ikea. This chair that you remember, it's been sort of passed around the house at the moment. In our temporary living room, it's from Ikea. Isn't it kids? All right. That's an extension update, by the way. Phoebe's wardrobe. Uh, so yeah, we genuinely do have some Ikea products around the house. I was gonna do a brand deal with them about six months ago, but it just didn't feel what they wanted, felt kind of right, but maybe one day in the future. Uh, they've got this like weird character bloke chap on there. Uh, can you see there? He's like a happy little man going, hello. Uh, but they is on all of their packaging and their instructions to make things. If you've ever built anything with Ikea, you will see that guy and he will like haunt your dreams. At first you were like, I can't do it. I just need a hammer, that's all I got. And then you do it and then all of a sudden this guy becomes your best friend and you end up with loads of boxes and these like everywhere. Should we make meatballs? So we're gonna make the meatballs first. These are the ingredients we're gonna go for, the beef and pork mince, very common uh, in meatballs, but I'm gonna actually add that in last so I've got my hands uh, non-raw meat kind of vibe. Now, the only thing I don't like about the instructions is it hasn't given you a list of tools that you need, like, you know, like a chisel and a, uh, they, they always got these weird wooden noggins inside. Got like so many of them in my garage. Uh, so it says an onion finely chopped. What I tend to do is find the little bum, the corey bit, and then aim towards that. Now horizontal cut, and another horizontal cut, and if you can get another cheeky one in, just on the top, and then just straight down, like that. See, you get it all nice and diced. Dice your onion. Oh, and get rid of the bum bit. No one wants a bum in their um, meatballs. And also try not to cry. These are emotional onions today. Wow. Ah, oh, I'm crying. I'm watching Titanic, oh my gosh. I am actually crying right now. Uh, that doesn't normally happen. That's a nice, strong onion. Nice. There it is, onion goggles, one of the first gadgets I ever reviewed for that. Mm -hmm. I also could use my veggie chopper, but I haven't actually got a full one myself in the house yet because I sold them all. But I have got a garlic rocker, like a Barry Lewis garlic rocker in the veggie kit, which is coming back soon on Amazon. Like that. Garlic. Onions. Breadcrumbs. I can't find many things in this house. I keep looking in the wrong cupboards. I get really emotional. Gosh, that onion is Are you crying as well? We're all, we're all crying. Breadcrumbs, yeah. right? This is a true story. Someone asked me on Twitter the other day. Um, I don't tend to like putting breadcrumbs in a burger, but it does help to sort of bind, bind it and hold it. Nice. Um, someone said to me, is there any alternative? And apparently if you whiz up Rice Krispies uh, breakfast cereal into a really fine powder, because it's just something to kind of plug the gaps, that's an alternative. I don't know if she did that. And if she did, I don't know if she ended up with a Rice Krispie burger, but you don't tend to taste these anyway. Uh, this is a bit worrying. Last time I used the scales, they are already nearly 200 grams out. That's probably why we had a really flowery uh, cake the other day. <laughs> so, 100, no, <laughs> it's not. I only reset it to 100, you donkey, that's all right. I'll set it to 200. 100 grams of breadcrumbs, apparently. I love how I've randomly got my hammer still on the table from the opening scenes. <laughs> All right, so we might as well start adding some of this into somewhere, otherwise the table is just gonna get completely covered in random bits and bobs. Story of my life. Oh, crumbs. An egg, salt and pepper, uh, no salt bay today. Feels very 2018, doesn't it? Okay, so other than the meat, uh, the only other thing we need is milk. I have never put uh, milk or any other wet mixture into uh, this, I need tablespoons by the way, this, I've done it in tablespoons, not mills. So one, two, three, four, five. I have never ever put milk or water or any other extra fluid other than an egg uh, into a meatball or burger mix. That's the thing actually, if you wanted you can make one giant Ikea meatball or just burgers. It doesn't have to be meatballs, does it? Just put the meat in, instant regret, the fact that I should have picked up a bigger bowl earlier on, doesn't matter. Um, Taking my ring off if I can. Oh my gosh, I'm so married it hurts, look. Okay, in we go. Now I'm gonna try and keep one hand clean. Ugh, I've got some meat on my table. So we're bringing together, look, I'm squishing the yolk up. Bringing that together, the onion, the garlic. Oh, the smell in there is amazing. Oh my gosh, 
<laughs> this is the setup I've got. I've got to bend down so low that it's going everywhere. Thank you to everyone that's mentioned that the uh, kitchen that we're temporarily using, that I was like, oh, I really didn't want to show you this. Um, it looks a lot like the very first kitchen that I filmed in. It does. Almost identical in places. Anyhow, that's looking quite good now. We're getting a fairly consistent mixture. We want to kind of hide those breadcrumbs in there. Oh my gosh. Yes, just imagine just making that as one big meatball. <laughs> Nice. Now, I really wish I had my wish.com meatball maker thing from a previous gadget video because now we just shape them into the meatball shapes. Yeah, it has kind of defeated the point of my um, hands-free making because I've got to use both to kind of make like, you know, just extra large table tennis ball shapes. Now, I feel like I'm making some sort of meatball documentary. Hello, welcome to Making Meatballs Part 5. Um, I'm going to skip to this. Let's get them all done. Oh, Jesus. I've got to make some more now. They fell on the floor. <laughs> Just for that shot as well. <sighs> okay, I've got another batch. I'm only making nine. I've made them quite small and you can actually get loads out of that mix. This is how much I've got left. So we're going to save that for tea tonight. Uh, we don't really want to have... Um... Oh, did I just say tea? I don't know if I've ever said that. Hi tea. That's very English. Tea, dinner, whatever. I call tea and dinner the same thing. Let's discuss that in the comments if you want. Fight it amongst yourselves. I don't mind. Uh, so we're just going to go for the nine. Now, when you make a burger or a meatball, it is good to refrigerate it, and the steps do say uh, to refrigerate them uh, for two hours. I ain't got time for that, and you probably ain't got time for that. We'll cover it, yes, Ratmaster 3000. And I'm gonna stick these in the special fridge, the freezer, for about 10 minutes. All right, just Ratmaster the rest. You can put it in the fridge too once you cover it, uh, or you can put it in the freezer for another day. You could make meatballs on Christmas Day. All right, so we're using a hob. So the recipe states, ladies and gents, to fry these at first and then bake them in the oven. So we're going to stay true to the recipe. I would not normally do that. I would normally uh, get my pan, uh, fry it and brown it as it tells you to, and then create an oven by sticking a lid on and then keeping it moving around and around and around. But no, we'll stay true to Mr. Swedish Stickman and uh, make it work as they want it to. And this goes really weird as well. When you ignite it, you get a really hot flame and then you turn it down. I don't think that's good for safety, is it? Look. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the grill. <laughs> what I mean is, look, it's a high flame first to get it going and it has to turn this way. So look, we're going to get a big flame. You see that? That's huge. Surely, like my other hobs in the past have all been, you start with a low flame first. I don't know. Crazy. I guess most people aren't normally filming when they cook Swedish meatballs. Uh, so a good little drop of oil there. Oh yeah, we're going to get this nice and warmed up. It's going to be sizzly. So our temporary oven thing, it says 180C conventional fan, 180C is here, we'll just get it going, it's going to warm up, lovely jubbly, light is on, uh, also our smart meter today is indicating I've already spent 80p on electricity. Alright, slowly adding in the meatballs, rolling them down, well hey, <laughs> we are just browning them, we're just going to keep them moving. So this is to get the outsides, to get that sort of nice golden colour, because that gives it that crunch, that lovely texture on it. Like charring things in general, like toast. I love mine darker because you just get that more char, that flavour. It's not burnt always. Sometimes it is, but that's your get out card, alright? When you go to a barbecue and you, you, you get a burnt sausage, they charred it, alright? Alright, so our oven is preheated whilst that was cooking away. Uh, Line it with silpat or baking parch and whatever you've got. Oh, stick it down. Uh, incidentally, if you like the idea of like spatulas and tongs and stuff, that's my next kit after the veggie prep kit. We'll work on it right now. There'll be news on that soon. Now, you need to cover this. And by doing that, it's going to basically reenact the lid thing that I was talking about earlier in the pan. That's good. Like, I miss doing that because I like rolling them around, but this is going in the oven for about half an hour. And that, although we've cooked the outside and charred it, by baking it, it's going to cook it through the middle. Nice. So do keep an eye out for those other kits that can be launching. I did have a company last week got in touch about the Rap Master saying, Hey Barry, use your Rap Master so much. Would you like us to help you develop your own Baz Master? I'm like, Baz Master? That's amazing. I had all these ideas and I was like, I don't know. I kind of stay loyal to my Rap Master, you know? Got the frying pan here to one side. Still a teeny bit warm, hence me putting uh, the trivet down. Uh, I cleaned it out fully because I want to stay true to this recipe, but if I was going to do it normally, I'd leave a little bit of that juice from the meatballs cooking in and the oils to go into this sauce. Oh, I really wish I did that now. You do that, do it, it'll be good. So step five is the sauce. We're kind of mingling around here and it's full of flavour. We have got some vegetable stock. Oh, 
oh, I made this earlier. So good. And this is beef stock as well. So you've got vegetable stock and beef stock going in. It is the most confused sauce in the world. We've got some soy sauce. We've got some double cream. Uh, obviously it's a creamy sauce, so that's it. Uh, double cream is also known as heavy cream. And of course, the uh, Dijon mustard, uh, something I don't use that often, although it is nice with a toasted uh, ham sandwich. Very nice indeed. Wow. <coughs> well, I'm really excited about that. The meatballs are smelling sensational right now. What we're gonna do, first up, to help thicken this sauce, this is some flour. Should melt the butter really, but I like to live dangerously. <laughs> And we're going to go to crazy flame again. Boom! Look at that. Turn that right down. I want a bit more control. A lot of people say to you, Barry, why do you like a flame so much? Well, you see that? You know how you can sort of see what the flame is doing? I guess it's kind of like going back to caveman cooking with a flame. I just like that. I know there's like induction hobs that are a bit safer and electrical ones and all that sort of stuff. But I've never quite understood like, what is four? What is seven on an electric hob? Is that hot? Is, is, is that this? Is that that? It's, it's just, I've never really got on with them. I don't mind, but that's why I'll always try and have a gas hob if I can. There we go. Enough hob chat for one day. Oh, there we go. It's all mingled together now. So we're just cooking this off for about a minute. And as we add the fluid, this will all dissolve through. It might be good to switch to a whisk, but we'll add our fluids now. Okay, so in goes that vegetable stock. Wow. The beef stock. What does it say? What does it say? Uh, two teaspoons of soy sauce. So a good shake and a good shake. A teaspoon of the mustard. That's going to give it some kick. And last but not least, oh, hello cream. 150 mils of that going in. This is going to be amazing. We really just want to mix it over the heat to get all of those floury, buttery lumps out and integrated with the sauce. And apparently that will be it done. We've got five seconds, that's gonna auto shut off. The smell is stonking coming from there. They're gonna be so tender. <gasps> and there's the beep. But look, if you leave this for too long, like it just literally stepped away, it's on a nice medium heat, it does form a skin and it can burn the bottom of the pan. So do, I have been stirring it, <laughs> it has thickened up, so it's great. But like I say, that's how quick, if you take your eye off it, how you can actually probably ruin the sauce and burn it. So make sure you keep it on a low heat, keep it stirring. I'm gonna take this off the heat and uh, keep stirring a little bit more, and that'll be it done. Wow. <laughs> yes, they're still hot. They're cooking in the pan. I'm gonna let them cool down and we'll serve it up. From my previous Swedish adventures here on the channel, I know that Swedish people love potatoes alongside their dishes. And in fact, it does say to serve it with creamy mash. Made some mashed potato last night, but also there's something called lingonberry sauce, which you can get from Ikea. Uh, we don't have any of that, but we do have cranberry. So uh, I'm just gonna serve it all up with that. Doesn't very look aesthetically pleasing, does it, mashed potato, no matter what you do to it. All right, the meatballs. The sauce that I warmed up, oh my gosh. Just let that drizzle. I'm gonna get a bit on the potato as well. Let that drizzle on there. Oh my goodness me. Look at that. Man, that smells good. And I think, I don't wanna offend the Swedish people too much, but I hope I haven't. Um, that's basically Swedish meatballs. I get a lot of requests for these recipes and Ikea has kind of forced you guys to want me to do this more. Let's not just take my word for it. We have got the UK's number one under 10 meatball taster, right? Yeah. And her coach. Let's see how authentic they are. You wanna have a go? I'm Look at you meatball. getting right in there. Oh my goodness, Chloe. Is that good? Yeah. They taste like your real ones. They taste like the real ones? Well, they should. I'm like literally on my knees again. <laughs> Finding the weird camera angles to find you guys. All good? Very good. I think this is our lunch now, isn't it? This is my second meatball. Is it? You enjoy it, mate. <laughs> I'll leave it to the meatball reviewer because I don't really know much Swedish things other than ABBA, Thomas Brolin and a few other Swedish footballers and Ikea, really. Um, but I love your food, like Swedish people. This is, mm. I know, because I know meatballs is quite a popular dish over there and uh, this sort of, sort of style sauce and potatoes and things. But I would definitely try that out. Mm. So good. If you see other recipes like this that get released by companies you want to see me try or any sort of clones, I love doing this sort of thing. Give it a try and I'll see you again. Bye. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. Um, I missed it, but I dropped a meatball on the floor. <laughs>
And these dogs are very happy all of a sudden. Did you share it? Great. <laughs>